All right, let's talk about an actual method for graphing these functions along with like the definitions that you can use to help you answer questions. All right, so this is typically what our functions are gonna look like where A is the coefficient of the whole function, B is the coefficient of X, and C is how we're shifting left and right inside of the function. Okay, all right, so amplitude is always the absolute value of this A. All right, so just like what we found with this graph, the amplitude was three, the absolute value of the number in front. The period is always two pi over the absolute value of B, so we'll talk about that. And then the phase shift, so how much is it shifting left and right? So that would be the same thing as a horizontal shift. It's two pi, uh, negative C over B. All right, so a negative phase shift is a shift to the left, positive phase shift is a shift to the right, but we can just use horizontal shifts like we've normally used, and I don't want to mess up your definitions. All right, so here is our step-by-step -step process to graphing sine and cosine functions. You need to find the amplitude, period, and phase shift, and so we're going to use these things to do that. Then we're going to determine an interval of one period, so how long it takes to um, repeat. So from 0 to 2 pi is what usually happens unless our graph has been shifted horizontally some kind of way. Um, then we're going to divide the interval into fourths and plot our key points. So just like we had these five key points here, we're going to do that for all of our functions. And then we're going to use rules for transformations if we need. Okay, so let's talk about this function. But before we do this, I want to remind us our functions are going to look like this. Okay, so in words, using what we've already learned before, how is this graph different from sine of x? All right, so the original is sine of x. This is the changed one. It should be shifted pi over 6 units to the left. All right, so how will we go through a process? You can definitely look at a graph and just shift it, but how will we go through the whole process of doing this? Because for some more complicated problems, you'll actually need to work through it all. All right, so before we start graphing, let's determine the period, amplitude, and phase shift. So it'd be helpful if we determine A, B, and C. So this A, B, and C with our graph. All right, so our, there's nothing in front, so our A is one. There's nothing in front of x, so our b is also 1. And then in front in c is actually pi over 6. So now we can answer all of our questions. So the period, so how long it takes our graph to repeat. All right, remember we had a formula. 2 pi over the absolute value of b. So for us, 2 pi over 1. So it's going to be the same as before. The period is 2 pi. So that's how long it takes to repeat. We need to find the amplitude. So how tall does it get from the middle? Well, we have a formula for that. Amplitude is the absolute value of the number in front. So our amplitude is 1. And then phase shift, how does it shift left and right? We have a formula for that, negative C over B. All right, so negative pi over 6 over 1 is negative pi over 6. And that's exactly what we expected. We expected it to be shifted pi over 6 units to the left. Okay, so now here's where the work comes in. We need to find an interval containing one cycle. All right, so we always start off with sine and cosine. We know one cycle happens between zero and two pi. That's what usually happens. 
But notice inside of our function, we don't, we don't just have x. We have x plus pi over 6. <coughs> so x plus pi over 6 is the thing that's going to go between 0 and 2 pi. Okay. And so now we need to solve for x, so we have a normal interval. Okay, so I'm going to subtract pi over 6 everywhere. And so we get negative pi over 6, x, and 11 pi over 6. So this tells us the interval of our x values. All right, so you can actually write it as an interval. So we're looking at x values between negative pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. I always like to box in my answers. I'm going to come back and box these in. All right, so that is our interval. All right, the second thing that I want to do with this interval is to create key points. So just like we did here, we found five points on our graph. That's exactly what we're going to do now. So to find our key points, we're going to take the new period which this one is still 2 pi, but in other problems it can be different, and divide it by 4. And that's how we're going to get our five key points. All right, so our period is 2 pi, divide by 4, that's pi over 2. And that is going to help us do our key points. All right, so let's talk about how we're going to do it. We want our period to be this interval from negative pi over 6 to 11 pi over 6. That's still a space of 2 pi units. It's just shifted. All right, so our first x value we're going to use is going to be the first endpoint. So that's our first key point. Our second key point is going to be negative pi over 6 plus pi over 2. Alright, so we would need to get a common denominator to be able to add these two. I have pre-added, it's pi over 3. Okay. So we started here, we move to pi over 3. Next point is going to be pi over 3 plus pi over 2. So this is the number we're adding every time. That's 5 pi over 6. x4, we're starting with 5 pi over 6, adding pi over 2, 4 pi over 3. And then finally, x5, 4 pi over 3 plus 5, pi over 2 is 11 pi over 6. And we know we added up correctly if we ended with where our interval ends. So we're starting at negative pi over 6, ending at 11 pi over 6. Okay, so now we're going to go about sketching our graph. Alright, so I will put the usual points on here. Alright, as well as the usual points on our x-axis. Okay. All right, and so now I am going to plot the points, but I think I should do it in the next video so this one doesn't get too long.